What is going on everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we're going over, is this the end of the meme stocks? We're going to be talking about a bunch of the stocks that have made some significant moves in the past couple months. And I mean that to the upside and now to the downside. So we're going to be diving into a bunch of stocks, what this means going forward. And I want to dive into a Bloomberg video. We'll take bits and pieces from this video, talk about what they have to say, and then do I agree with what they're saying and the thought process going forward for meme stocks. Now, when I talk meme stocks, there are a ton of stocks where that came from. A lot of stocks could be classified as meme stocks. I have five right here that we're going to briefly talk about. First one is GameStop down 64% from its recent highs back a few months ago. AMC down 58% from its highs. SNDL Sundial Growers down 78% from the highs it has hit. Zom, good old Zometica right now as we're watching, dropping down below that 150. Zom is down over 56% from its previous highs. And then last but not least on my list, at least for right now, CTRM down massive, down 70% from its recent highs. And today they just made matters worse, down 20% alone today after doing a recent offering, a direct offering. So we're going to be diving into why these drops are happening, what's causing some of these drops, and could we expect this to continue in the future? And are we done with meme stocks? Can this type of stuff ever happen again? Could we expect it next year? We're going to talk about all that here in this video, but make sure you're jumping down, subscribing to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button. That is all we ask. The platform we're using here is Weeble. Always links down below to get two free stocks with that. And also that first link in the description is going to be a link to Tip Ranks, the research platform we're going to be using. The research platform we use here on this channel and over on the second channel all the time. They're doing a 20% off Easter sale for the next two days. So make sure you take advantage of that. Let's dive right in. So back to GameStop here and what is causing a lot of these drops? Now, there is a combination in my eyes. It's not just one thing. It's not like, oh my gosh, everyone's panic selling GameStop because of this or because, okay, no one cares about trading anymore. It's a lot of different things, I think, that are all kind of stacking up and adding up to what we're seeing today. A lot of folks on Wall Street are pointing out this kind of petering out in trading of these retail frenzied stocks, the focus ones, your costs, AMC, GameStop, as you said. And they, we're seeing a large drop off in trading volume and shares really aren't doing much over the last few months. The big reckoning that a lot of folks are pointing to is that this idea that traders that were bored and kind of looking to do something with their money worth throwing cash and buying or riding options on these stocks without really a reason, um, understanding why they were bidding it up. And the big reckoning is that there's a lot of flashing alarms on Wall Street that this trend is going to only fizzle out and over the coming months, things should get back to where they are uh, more fair valued, um, which obviously with GameStop up over 900%, <laughs> yeah. a lot of folks on Wall Street are pointing back towards the $1 billion range as opposed to the about $13.5 billion it was valued at uh, on Thursday's close. So right there, what they're pretty much talking about is how we're seeing volume fading out. We can dive into the chart and look at GameStop. I mean, back at the end of January, early February, look at the volume bars. I mean, you're talking about 195 million shares traded on the 22nd. Look at today. For example, today, 13 million shares. You go back to last week, you're talking 8 million shares, 16 million shares a significant drop off in trading volume. And so that's showing us there's potentially less interest among retail traders. Not to mention, I think a big piece here is the recent tech and growth stock sell-off. We've seen a lot of stocks in the small cap space and the tech space and those high growth stocks, the SPACs, the more flashy stocks that are gonna offer your higher returns. They're also gonna offer higher downside, but the past like two months or so, we've seen a significant sell-off, a lot of names that were very popular. So what ended up happening in my eyes here is a lot of retail traders got absolutely taken to the woodshed and wiped out. For example, right? If let's say you were buying games up, up here, you panic sell because, okay, it comes back down to the 40s. All right, you know what? Let me just cut my losses. And all of a sudden, GameStop pushes back on up. And next thing you know, you're buying call options here for GameStop at $800. And GameStop's here at $300. It pops to $350 and then pulls back down even harder, back under $200. So you probably got taken to the woodshed multiple times, whether it's GameStop, whether it's other stocks out there, where when things just weren't going well, you see a 10% down day, you know, 5%, 10% down days. And a lot of these stocks got hit very hard, not to mention stocks like Tesla. Tesla's up pretty nicely today, but look at Tesla. You know, Tesla went on a pretty nice downtrend for quite some time. Now, that's a pretty substantial sell-off, going from $900 all the way down sub $600. That's crazy, right, in terms of a pretty short period of sell-off, but it comes with the territory, right? The stock was up so much the past couple of months, to a degree, right? This is actually a pretty healthy pullback, I think, for, for Tesla stock. But if you're buying call options when you think the dip was in 
and then it keeps on dipping, well, that's how you get blown out. Next thing you know, I'm out of money. I can't trade anyway. Who cares? I'll go to the next thing. At the same time, I think what you're going to be seeing is that you go through periods of hype. You go through periods of, oh my gosh, euphoria. Everything is great. Let's run these stocks up. I'm going to keep buying, buying, buying. And then eventually, right, what ends up happening is you kind of see a rotation back to just value. Value in a sense of, okay, we saw value stocks perform pretty well the past couple of weeks but at the same time, true value of a stock. So you're seeing a lot of these stocks coming back down to more true value levels. Now, a lot of them are still inflated, but you're seeing them coming back down, coming back down to somewhat of a sense of reality. Even if you want to price in future growth, they're coming back down to a much more reasonable level. And that gets into a whole other debate of like, okay, fundamentals, technicals, to a degree, they both matter, right? You can make the argument that, yeah, technical analysis is BS, who cares? You could also make the argument that, okay, what was driving GameStop? There's to a degree, there's some technical analysis at play here because it kept going and fundamentals weren't driving it. But you also see at some point, you see technical analysis converge with fundamental analysis and that's what ends up giving you support areas, resistance areas. Hey, a resistance area is here on a certain stock because they're sellers. Why are there sellers? Well, maybe people at that point think the stock is too overvalued. So there you go. Fundamentally, it's overvalued. I'm going to sell there. Technically speaking, hey, that's a resistance level. I'm going to sell there. They kind of line up. So they do blend and the lines blend. And that's why a mix of both is is obviously great for someone who's looking to be a longer term investor or be in this game longer term. The next question is, can meme stocks see a resurgence? And I think this video also points to a pretty interesting point. So Bailey, is the, is the, the meme stock run, is it over? It depends who you talk to. One of the things that a couple sources were quick to point out was that retail investors, the use of platforms like Twitter and Reddit will be here to stay. You will continue to see individual stocks be driven, but it won't be enough to drive the market. And it'll simply be, you know, maybe someone posts something on Twitter and that catches a trade room by fire, by like wildfire. But it's not going to be the extent that we saw to start January when we saw a number of stocks just surging in trading volume and share price. Um, on the kind of the drop of the dime for no reason. And I think that's actually really, really important to note. And I think that's how things are going to go. You understand, we understand that social media, YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff is massive. And these chat rooms, these kind of individual communities online, right, that, you know, call out stocks, alert stocks, and go into plays together. That is all the kind of like the future of what people are now realizing, if you haven't realized it yet. Now, people have been doing this for quite some time, but I think this whole craze has gotten a lot of people to understand, hey, they have the power to do this. And so this will be around. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's just a matter of the extent and the magnitude, which I don't think is going to be like how we saw it because you had the perfect storm. Not only was there recent stimulus, on top of that, everyone's home, pandemic. Everyone's working from home, everyone's home. It's also the winter months, it's colder. You're not doing many outdoor activities across most of the country. So you had a lot of that kind of lining up and it was the perfect storm in a sense for this craziness that we saw, these meme stocks to go wild and for everyone to keep buying and buying and buying and having some fun. And last but not least, I wanna mention the diamond hands thing. Cause when it comes to diamond hands, everyone's like to the moon diamond hands. And I made a video going over a little more in depth my thoughts on the whole diamond hands is why it's not really the best way to think about things. But in brief summary, that's really cool and it's funny and it makes some sense. And okay, all stocks go up. Everyone wants to say that all stocks go up. The problem with that is that you should at least know what you own, right? If you know what you own, you understand what's going on. For example, CTRM today. I made this point on the second channel. If you guys want to go check out that video, it was a brief little video on CTRM, but CTRM is a stock I never touched back in here because I knew the history. CTRM, you know, back the past 18 months would pop up off of news and they drop an offering and they would consistently do that. It seems like it would seem like every other week they'd do the same exact thing. So I was like, hey, CTRM is up a lot. I almost can guarantee they are going to offer. And now they finally did and things started to kind of wane out right in terms of volume. And now down 20%, that hurts, right? For someone who's still in CTRM. So you can kind of see how this goes. Understand the past history, know what you're buying before you buy it. And like we talk about here on the channel, all about the risk reward. If you're buying CTRM right now or you know their past history and you're like, hey, I'm going to wait for an offering before I buy it. Well, guess what? Today's your opportunity. You're down 20%. You get a 10, 20% recovery in the next like two weeks. You made 20% on your money, whereas somebody who bought this thing over $1 is getting crushed right now. So be smart when it comes to diamond hands. If you want to diamond hand Tesla, you want to diamond hand Apple and all those types of stocks and the S&P and stuff like that. Yes, because we know long term, a lot of those stocks are not going anywhere. The S&P 500 is not going anywhere. That is over time has consistently gone up. So diamond hand something like that. Don't just blindly say diamond hands on a random stock you've never actually looked into, not knowing any of the background to that stock 
at all. So hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully it gave you guys a little perspective on what we're going to be expecting going forward and how this stuff may evolve going forward. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. That is all I ask of you guys. And if you are interested in getting two free stocks with Weeble, that link will be down below as well, as well as the link to tip ranks to get access to that 20% off coupon for the next like two days. While it's offered, it's the platform I'm using like all the time, every single day now when it comes to researching stocks and diving deeper into analyst price targets and stuff like that. Thanks so much. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.